Assalamu alaikum, welcome again. In the previous video, we went through some basics in microbiology. And if you still remember, we said that we can divide bacteria into either gram positive or gram negative groups. So today we'll start with gram positive, and the first thing on our list is Staphylococcus. So we're going to discuss three species of Staph Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, and Staph saprophyticus. All these three bacteria are gram positive, which take a blue or violet color if we apply gram staining. They're arranged in clusters like grape. Generally speaking, both Staph aureus and Epidermidus are known to cause nosocomial infections, which are simply hospital-acquired infections. Let's start with Staph aureus. Staph aureus, which literally means golden grapes, is how it looks under the microscope, and it looks golden in blood agar. Now for the features of Staph aureus, the most important protein is protein A. This protein binds the FC region of the IgG, exerting an antiphagocytic effect. Also, it has both catalase enzyme, which converts hydrogen peroxide to water, and coagulase enzyme, which converts fibrinogen to fibrin. In addition to that, it also has DNA enzyme, which obviously breaks down DNA. Moreover, it's a beta hemolytic bacteria, which means it results in complete hemolysis of red blood cells in the blood agar. In the lab, if you want to know that you're dealing with Staph aureus, you can use mannitol salt agar. The salt will only allow Staphylococcus species to grow. And if the bacteria can ferment mannitol, then it's aureus, and the agar will have yellow color. Otherwise, the agar will turn pink, so although the bacteria is staph, it's not aureus, so it could be epidermidus or saprophyticus. Staph aureus is the most common cause of septic arthritis and osteomyelitis in adults. In addition to that, staph aureus can cause many skin infections, acute endocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart, and since staph aureus is normally present on skin, IV drug users are at higher risk of getting endocarditis. Staph aureus also produces some toxins that can cause some serious problems in humans, and they are toxic shock syndrome toxin. This toxin is considered as a super antigen, which has a very high affinity to T-cells MHC class 2 receptors. After binding to it, and due to this hyper affinity, the overactivation of T-cells will result in cytokine storm, which can be fatal for the patient. Then we have exfoliative toxin, which causes scalded skin syndrome. And lastly, we have enterotoxin, which causes rapid symptoms of food poisoning. Last thing to mention about Staph aureus is that it can transform into something more dangerous. Staph aureus can alter its penicillin binding protein present on its cell wall. And by doing so, it becomes MRSA, or methicillin resistant Staph aureus. Keep this in mind when you think about its treatment, because we specifically use vancomycin for MRSA. Just a side note, one of the high yield questions about vancomycin is that it can cause red man syndrome as a side effect. They love to ask about it in board examinations. Now let's talk about Staph epidermidis. Staph epidermidis can produce a biofilm layer, which is an extracellular material irregularly organized to protect the bacteria, which makes it more resistant to be washed off by regular ways and to some antibiotics as well. That's why it's usually related to implants. An example of an implant is a prosthetic joint or a catheter. Interestingly, Staph epidermidis is the most common cause of endocarditis after artificial heart valve surgery. Along with Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis is normally present on our skin. And again, that's why penetrating the skin with unsterile tools can result in serious problems. And now we'll talk about the last organism in this video, Staph saprophyticus. There isn't much to say about Staph saprophyticus. It's usually related to sexually active females in whom it can cause urinary tract infections. One thing to distinguish between Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus is that the latter is novobiosin resistant. Now to summarize the enzymes that these bacteria have, that helps us in lab testing by the way. All of the Staphylococcus species are catalase positive, meaning they have the enzyme. Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus are urease positive, whereas Staph aureus is negative for that enzyme. I will explain the urease function in a moment. And only Staph aureus is coagulase positive which we already talked about before in the video. Now for the urease, and what it does, is that it simply breaks down urea into ammonia. And then this ammonia would raise the pH around the bacteria, allowing it to survive longer and be able to colonize. Because this species of bacteria prefer an alkaline environment, thus the urease is considered as a virulence factor for it. And that's it for the first part of gram-positive bacteria. I hope you enjoyed. Please give us your feedback so we can improve in the next videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get our latest new videos and explanations. See you later.